Okay, here we have 2.3, writing the equations of the line through two given points. Find an equation for the line below. So we do know that in order to find the equation of the line, we have this formula here. We do need to know the slope and the y-intercept in order to find this um, equation of the line. However, we also have another um, I would call it a formula to finding um, the equation of a line. It's called the point slope formula. Okay, and so for the point slope formula, that's going to look like this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m is, of course, equal. is actually m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? And what this means, if I see something like this, it means the y-coordinate of the second point, right? And then something like x1 means the x-coordinate of the first point okay so what you have to label your points as the first point and the second point now if you choose to label this one as your first and this one as your second or vice versa does not matter you'll still come up with the same answer okay so for me the first thing I want to do is figure out what my points are and then I can label everything so I notice that this is one two so two the x-coordinate positive and then one two three positive for the y and then I also have another point over here which is negative one for the x-coordinate and negative one for the y-coordinate okay so those are my points I'm gonna call this point my first point and I'm gonna call this point my second point okay so then that makes, that makes x1 equal to 2, um, y1 equal to 3, x2 equal to negative 1, and, and y2 equal to negative 1. And so then now I can calculate my slope. That would be y2 first, right? y2, which is negative 1, minus y1, which is 3, over x2, which is negative 1, minus x1, which is 2. And then if I simplify that, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and those um, negatives can reduce, leaving me with 4 thirds. Now I can take this slope and these values here and now I can use the point slope formula to get my equation, okay? So I'm gonna take the m, the x1, and the y1 and come up with my equation. So I have y minus y1, which is three, equal to m, which is four thirds, times x minus x1, which is two. So I can't get rid of those parentheses. That's going to be a negative. And this one's also going to be a negative 2. And then I can type this as my answer. It didn't say it wanted the answer in a specific form. Um, but eventually they do want to have them in this form. So I will have to eventually learn how to multiply this out. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that now. So the first thing you would do to get this to look like that is distribute the four thirds. Then the next thing you would do is add three to both sides. 
And if you're not great with your fractions, you can always use your calculator. Like I can multiply fractions pretty easily. Um, adding and subtracting is harder because you have to get the common denominators. But four, oops, four thirds, just to double check my work, times a negative two is in fact the negative eight thirds. So that was correct. And then if I add three to it, I actually get a positive one third. And so this is the uh, slope intercept form of the line. Now, as soon as I get rid of the double parentheses around the signs, I could have typed this as my answer and it, Alex would have accepted it. It wouldn't even have accepted this. Um, but for formality purposes and for future purposes, um, it's always best to have it in the slope intercept form, especially later if, for instance, on a review or a test, they specifically ask you for the equation in slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and try. There was a lot of new information. We had two new formulas. We had to put it all together, right? Um, so let's try it with another problem. Now notice the difference between A and B. In A, they gave you an image, and then you had to write the coordinates for it before you could begin. Part B, um, they give you the actual points explicitly. They do not give you the picture, okay? So this one is actually a little bit um, easier in that it has one step less. I don't have to come up with these. I already have them written there. And so then I can label this one as my first point, this one as my second point, and so then x1 is 4, y1 is 4, x2 is 6, and y2 is negative 2. And then I start using my formulas. So the first thing I need is the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, you're going to notice that although you get to use a note sheet during your test, there's so many different formulas. Um, that it may be best to start trying to commit at least some of them to memory. So in the best way to do that, I find, is if every single time you're going to use the formula, you rewrite that formula. Writing it over and over and over again helps us to remember it, okay? So I'm going to plug in everybody. I have negative 2 minus 4, and then I have 6 minus 4. So that's negative 6 over 2, or just a negative 3. So that's my slope. Now, I already know what x1 and y1 look like, so now I can write my equation using the point-slope formula, this guy up here. So point-slope formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So then I have y minus 4 equal to negative 3 times x minus another 4. And again, this would have be accepted by Alex, but I'm going to go ahead and write it and keep going so that I can write the formal answer. So y minus 4 equals negative 3x. A negative 3 times a negative 4 is going to be a positive 12. And then finally, I just add 4 to get the y all by itself and I get negative 3x plus 16. And this is the slope intercept form of the line. It's easier to graph a line when it's in this form than it is to graph a line that is in that form, which is the reasoning behind um, most problems wanting to give the answer in this form.